Welcome to the coffee house. So are you looking to become a scrum master? Maybe you've never been a scrum master before and you're wondering how to write a resume. What goes on a resume for a scrum master? I mean, this is a role that's completely different from anything else we've seen in the workplace in recent years. So how do you go about writing a resume? Find out at the coffee house. Welcome to the Coffee House. I'm your barista, Vic Bonacci, and today's special is writing a Scrum Master resume. We all know what a resume is, but if you're working toward becoming this, this one-of-a-kind kind of a role, Scrum Master, how do you approach putting together a resume for it? What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you about four areas that I use when I approach writing a resume as a Scrum Master. And by the way, I wrote out a, uh, a nice post on my website, agilecoffee.com slash scrummasterresume, where you can see all of this laid out. So starting with gathering your data. What I typically like to do, uh, first of all, is maybe take a step back and use something like a journey map. Now I've done this several times in my career where I kind of like look over the, the odd jobs and experiences that I've had. And, and how did I feel about them? Like emotionally, were they uplifting or did they bring me down? And, and where am I now? And what's the crazy uh, circuitous path that I took to get here? Believe it or not, it's, it's very helpful, or at least it is for me. If you don't like journey mapping, uh, which is covered in Lisa Adkins's uh, book, um, it's hard to say, Adkins is possessive, right? Um, coaching Agile Teams, uh, she does talk a little bit about journey mapping in here. Um, but you can also do something like mind mapping or use another tool. Um, but I think kind of being kind of retrospective on your career, um, looking back and, and analyzing how did I get here and what are some of the key turning points, what are some of the great experiences that I enjoyed, uh, is a very useful exercise. Also, go through some of the... Uh, maybe emails or recommendations that you have, anything that you might have put on LinkedIn, and, and try to call that data as well. Try to find the really key parts of the data that you want to make sure that you, um, you can express. And hopefully you can express them in the, in the form of a story. So keep that in mind as well. When it comes to step two, which is all about deciding what types of companies you're, you're aiming for, basically two camps of companies. One is a very traditional, maybe it's a larger sized company, maybe it's been around for a very long time, and they do things by procedures. They have checklists, they have um, departments of people who do hiring, you know, human resources, or maybe they outsource a lot of that. So they're trying to um, scan in a lot of data quickly and, and find matches to give to the hiring managers. Um, that's kind of type one, the traditional type companies. And then type two are maybe the smaller, more nimble, more agile companies. The companies that um, might be younger, might be, as I said, smaller, maybe kind of a more um, modern um, recruiting process is implemented there. Um, so, so given that there's these two types of companies, if you can focus more on the latter, on the companies that are smaller, more, more nimble, then you could probably see chances of getting your stories read by an actual human um, go up. Because if you submit kind of a, a scrum master resume that talks about the wins that you've had and how you helped by you know, clearing out obstacles, etc., um, your keywords aren't going to quite click with the AI, the artificial intelligence, or the other systems that they, these bigger traditional companies might use to filter resumes. So your chances of success might be less with these more traditional companies than they might be uh, with these non-traditional, newer, kind of startup-y companies. So it's funny because um, as I was preparing not only this video, but the, the page that I wrote, um, I had a chance to talk to many people. I talked to some of my peers in Southern California who read a lot of resumes, and they gave me really great advice to share with you. But I also had a chance to walk around the coffee house. In fact, let's go see who's in the coffee house now, and maybe we can pick their brain about Scrum Master resumes. All right. Well, well, look who's here. Bob Galen, Josh Anderson. I hope you don't mind me 
sitting down and having a cup of coffee with you. I heard you talking about resumes. Let me get my cup of joe. Uh, I've got an energy drink. Is that okay? Is that allowed here? Is that okay? Like I'm not no, a coffee it's, guy. Is that this is the only coffee yeah. shop in the world that's BYOB. So, oh, okay. so you're good. Thank goodness. Right. So I've got a question for you on the topic of resumes. Um, what do you personally, what do you look for in a resume? If you're hiring a scrum master, what is it that you look for? I look for a story. So uh, what I look at is in each job listing that they have throughout their history, whether it's one, five, a hundred, what I'm looking for is can they demonstrate with that text that they made life better than it was when they started and tell me the change that they drove that I came in and we operated like this and I relentlessly pursued us to evolve in this manner. And when we got there, here's what life looked like. So what I don't, what I'll skim over and say, maybe this isn't a good fit is like, Hey, responsible for this, did this, check the box, blah, blah, blah. What I want to hear is, or read actually, to the point of this is a, this is the text thing is change this, evolve this, improve this. The, those, what I found is that when you build a team of relentless problem solvers, like amazing things happen. So that's what I want to see is can they identify that there is or isn't a problem and if there is what did they actually do about it listing your list of responsibilities that's just a job description like that doesn't tell me how like you made life better you just did a thing but you didn't make life fundamentally better and that's what i look for as a part of the resume for any role but especially the scrum master because that's ultimately what you're trying to do for an entire team of humans is enable that to happen so if a scrum master doesn't show me that then i'm not sure they've actually done the job Another thing that I learned, I forget where I learned this, someone maybe in a in a job, and I, I, I was laid off once, and it was one of those retraining firms, and I think someone said the top third of the first page is like your headline of the newspaper, and it resonated with me tremendously, because I, I do, like when I'm reading, it's, and they said that that real estate, independent of what you put in there, Right, that real estate is the most valuable real estate in the resume. And I mean, I've reviewed thousands of resumes and I would agree with that. I have a tendency to make the decision, what some people say 20 seconds or 10 seconds or something. I, I read a stat you, earlier today or yesterday that said seven, seven seconds. So. Yeah, it's not much. <laughs> yeah. So what it, whatever you do, it's it, independent of keeping it to one page. It's like, keep it short, keep it terse and focus. But recognize that, that real estate is incredibly important. Top top third of the first page. And then to me, I've always looked at whatever you want to call it, the goals and objectives up there. Like what are, so I wanna I wanna know why do you wanna you know, why do you wanna be a scrum master? And and I'm I'm sort of adding on to what Josh said. The two things I wrote down were problems to solve and impact. So don't tell Tell me what impact you've had to an organization historically and what problems have you solved? So I'm, I'm resonating with what Josh, I, I want to see that. I also want to see why that I don't want to just hire a scrum master who wants to make money. I want to hire someone who is passionate about the art and craft of scrum mastery. They're curious, they're motivated. Uh, and, and I want them to communicate the why in that, in that intro, the objective. I want to. I want to feel passion. If I don't feel passion in the objective, uh, I'm disappointed. So I hope. I hope that resonates or makes sense. I think yeah. so. I. I think it does. Oh yeah, Josh, come on. No, I just wanted to clarify. So we talked about those two different types of companies. I think depending on the type of company you're going after, that might determine the type of resume that you write. If you're going for one of those larger companies, all of those other things certs and education and speaking and groups that's going to be more important than yeah. the type of company that bob or vic or i would build where it is about the craft so again you have to understand the target that you're chasing and then craft your resume to suit them because with those larger companies and the ai and things like bob talked about like you're going to have to be able to check some boxes to to get it even to a human that's going to look at it Whereas if it's a smaller company or more targeted, like 
like we are, then we're going to consume it a little bit more than seven seconds, maybe the 30 yep. seconds. Maybe we'll, we'll invest the 30 to see if that story's there. Um, yep. But if that story's not there, it, it ultimately is going to fall flat. Cool. Well, I think we covered a lot of ground here. I'm going to leave the two of you to enjoy your conversation. I'll get back to my job as the barista. So thanks, Bob. Thanks, Josh. See You're you, welcome, Vic. Well, that was great seeing Josh Anderson and Bob Galen. Uh, and by the way, they had a, um, a recent, maybe in the spring of 2021, um, episode of their own podcast, The Metacast. What a great podcast. I advise you to check out any episode of theirs. But uh, episode 189, which was back in March, I want to say, um, they talked about how to get your first job as a scrum master. So a lot of what you may have heard in this little chat that we had um, might also pertain uh, to, to kind of just how to approach the job hunt in general. Check out their episode 189. If you'd like to hear the full audio of our conversation that you just saw the snippet of, you can go to the Agile Coffee podcast episode, I think it's episode 77, something, whatever it is, it's right here. So, um, so check out the 45, 50 minute long conversation that Josh and Bob and I had about specifically the Scrum Master resume. All right, back to my own sequence. So I said you've got part one where you're gathering data, part two where you're talking about what type of company you might want to pinpoint uh, your search with. Step three for me is just getting that, that first draft written. So as you heard Josh and Bob say, um, you want to tell stories. You want to make sure that you can explain um, the value that you delivered without adding a lot of jargon, a lot of um, certifications, a lot of um, kind of what were your responsibilities. Employers, especially in that second set of companies I talked about, they don't care quite as much about that. Really what they want to hear is like, how did you bring home the bear, as it were? How did you solve a problem? How did you help the team rise to some challenge? So if you have those types of stories, you want to make sure that you're inserting those. So you're writing your first draft. You want to pay attention, as Bob had said, to that top third of your resume, of page one of your resume. Get that story out there. Get those key experiences, those key wins right up at the front uh, in your summary, your objective, whatever it is. Um, and then you can go to the more traditional aspects of the resume, the experience, the education, the certifications might come a little bit later. And then finally, step four, in my opinion, is kind of going over that resume once more with a finer toothed comb. So look for ways that you can change the language to make it more actionable, make it more stimulating to someone who may be hiring you or may be working alongside you. You know, oftentimes in a lot of agile workplaces, not only does a hiring manager and kind of an HR recruiting department read the resumes, but sometimes your, co your future co-workers are going to be reading resumes. So make sure you have language in there that specifically addresses that. No one wants a lot of jargon kind of thrown at, thrown at them. But you do want to connect the dots. So even if you don't have experience as a Scrum Master, you might want to say things like, hey, I facilitated meetings. I got people to get interested in a topic. Um, and then kind of draw those specific examples. If they're true and you don't want to embellish on a resume, I want to make sure that's clear. But you want to make sure that uh, the people that are reading your language can connect those dots and say, oh, yeah, even though there is less Scrum Master experience, I see how they've got the mindset of a Scrum Master because they're leading teams in such a way. So, um, yeah, check out the, uh, the resume page here on agilecoffee.com slash Scrum Master Resume. Um, and you'll get all these tips and, and links to other resources as well. You might, at the end of it, think, why do I even need a resume? Listening to Josh and Bob and, and reading what other people may have said. Is a resume outdated? You know, that's for you to say. I think resumes are still vital because they are your calling card. Um, people somewhere in a department, uh, in an organization, will ask for them eventually. But uh, usually it's all about the networking. So keep that in mind. Maybe we'll talk about that next time at the coffee house. But for now, your order is up. So I encourage you to go out and find a seat and talk with someone else about Scrum Master resumes. Until next time, I'm your barista, Vic Bonacci. 
You can come back here for more informal and casual advice about the workplace. In addition, if you want to help us out, Tiny Tip Jar says go to our Patreon account. It gives us the ability to do more editing, get more interviews going, etc., etc. I'm not going to waste your time here, but I do thank you for joining me. Give a like if you like this video. If you want other people to see this information, subscribe, notifications, whatever you want to do here on YouTube is good for me. So until next time, enjoy your coffee with friends.